What's going on, y'all? This is Stevie with another episode of Project Twine. And today we're going over a common phrase that you'll hear when working with Unixy type systems. And that is, everything is a file. So we're going to go a little bit into what this means and give you a couple examples of it in play, as well as trying to understand the rationale behind the phrase. So what's the rationale behind using everything as a file? Well, if you think about it, everything on your computer is really just a stream of bytes or a bunch of characters just put together that represent a bunch of different things. So if we have everything represented as a file, that means we have one protocol, just one protocol. And so if we understand how this one thing works, we understand how a lot of different things work. So this allows us for better interoperability. So we can use a bunch of different tools together with the file format, and we can reuse tools and make them communicate with each other. And so we're really allowing ourselves for a much better form of modularity. The most important thing in my opinion, and you'll see this in just a couple of seconds, is that by using this simple text file format, we have a really good sense of transparency when we're working on a Linux system or a Unix system. You'll start to see that pretty much everything, really everything is represented as a file. But all of these things that I just mentioned, so modularity, like interoperability, like transparency, these are all part of a bigger picture. So the original developers and the original kind of founders of the Unix operating system came up with a set of approaches, a kind of mindset that you bring when you're building software technology. And throughout your engineering career, you will start to see how deep of an impact this sort of mindset has had and how it's leaked into pretty much a, like everything that we do as engineers. So we can just think of the practice of having the text file represent a lot of different things as being one of the core principles derived from this Unix philosophy. I found a really good quote from the book, The Pragmatic Programmer, and the author mentions uh, the idea of combining small, sharp tools and the use of one common underlying format, and that is the line-oriented plain text file to accomplish much larger and complex tasks. And we'll see this in just a couple seconds. All right, so I'm logged in onto a plain CentOS server here, and I'm just gonna run through a couple quick examples that demonstrate that everything in Unix is really just a file. So let's start off with the very basics. So let's go ahead and just create a file called basic text file.txt. And I'm just gonna write hello there, and then I'm just gonna quit out of it. And let's go ahead and also make a directory. And then I'm just going to list out what we just made in a detailed format. So in the first column, you can see that basic text file has a dash, right? And the one below that has a D. So what's going on here? Well, basic text file, the dash represents that basic text file is just a regular file. And the D represents that the directory that we just made is also a file, but a special type of file called a directory. So what I'm trying to show here is that the things that we kind of take for granted, like a directory is just a file. It just takes a different type of perspective to see that a directory is also just a file, but it functions slightly different than a regular text file does. All right, so you'll start to see that everything in Unix is just a file now, right? Well, let's go ahead and explore some other things. Well, this ls thing that I've been using, is that a file? Well, if I go into slash bin and I use ls and I look for ls, interestingly enough, it's right there and I just do ls-l and just like let's only look for the things that are start with or end with the ls and you'll see that this is also just a regular type of file. Hmm. So that must mean that executables are the things that we use to run our system are just files as well. That's really interesting. So this goes even much, much deeper. And so what if I try something like going into this directory that I made and then let's run vim 
in the background. So this ampersand, you don't really have to care about it for now, but the ampersand means let's run it in the background. So I'm going to run it in the background, and it gives us a number, 7,127. What does that mean? Basically, Unix is assigning it a number. So if I go into slash proc, right, and I list things inside there, and I look for that 7,127 number, it's there for some reason, and it just came out because I ran that process. So what does that mean? Well, that means that the processes are even represented as files. In this case, these files are directories. So if I look for that 7,127 thing, there it is, a D. So it's a directory. Interesting. So what happens if I go into that directory? and I ls the things inside. Well, you'll start to see that all the attributes of that file are actually listed right here. What about things like, um, like where we ran that file, as a matter of fact? If you might remember, we ran it from that directory that we made at the beginning, which was uh, like the tilde and then directory, right? So if I want to find out where a process is actually running from, all I need to do is look within my own file system. Crazy, right? So if I just do ls-l on CWD, which stands for a current working directory, I see that it's right there. So it's, it, this is a symbolic link. It's a different type of file, but nevertheless, it's a file. And it's telling us that we ran vim from that directory called slash root slash directory, which would be accurate. And that if we do ls-l on exe, as a matter of fact, we start to see that this even tells us where vim is located, which is really crazy. And this is also symbolic link. But it's basically here to demonstrate that everything that has to do with our system can is shown in our system and just as files. And we just have to look within our file system to really recognize what's going on inside our computer. So I just showed you how processes are really inherently transparent because when you create a process, there's a corresponding directory or a type of file that's made in slash proc that you can just look into and discover more about. So this is kind of that Unix way, that Unix philosophy of being very transparent about your software because we can just go into our file system to learn more about what's going on within our computer. So I want to take this one step further and show you a concept, show you that concept of interoperability, which is the idea of being able to use different tools together. And this is only possible because everything is just a file. So let's go into slash dev here. I'm just going to list everything out. So on the right hand side, I just want to point this out that XVDA1 and XVDA are actually representative of my hard drive. Interesting. So if I just ls l XVDA, you see that this is also just a type of file, but it's a special type of file. It's called a block device file. If you are paying close attention, you might have also noticed that there's files called standard error, standard in, standard out. And if you've programmed before, you would know that these are really important things in terms of being able to work with input and output. And as a matter of fact, if I just use one tool that you might have known, Echo, which just basically echoes things back out for us. If I echo that in to standard in, we actually get that right back out, which would not be the case if I put it out into something else, right? So basically what I'm showing here is that I'm using these two different things, these two different types of files that are being kind of created spontaneously and being able to use them together. Now, this is just scratching the surface of the type of things that you can do with the text files because um, everything is represented as a file. As a matter of fact, if I wanted to, for example, create a file to print, right? So if I go print file.txt and go hello, I want to print this, right? Interestingly enough, if I wanted to print this, all I really need to do is do, uh, you know, I could just cat print file.txt and then pipe that into lp-d and then put it in my printer name here. So this is crazy. This is a simple command that I'm just like putting together. And because everything is represented as a file, so even my printer, I can just, you know, spontaneously print things off my command line. 
And so this kind of sums up, and I hope this has shown you as a demonstration of how everything is really just a file. And because everything is just a file, in that unix -y sort of philosophy, in that, in that unix -y sort of way, we're allowed, we, we're it's only empowered to do all these things by combining these little tools and bec because they're so modular. And d also because they're files, uh, it's so transparent, we can learn so much about our systems just by exploring through our computer. So I highly suggest you do the same and you just like go through your computer and you just look on, you know, on the different types of files that you have and you'll start to see that really that that phrase is true everything is a file um it, well to be more specific everything is represented as a file now i hope that was helpful my throat is dead because this is my 95th recording um so i hope that was helpful <laughs>